Kaobi is a tool to deploy and configure OpenStack. It's not an official OpenStack project, but it has ambitions of becoming one in the future. While at the recent OpenStack project teams gathering, I spoke with Mark Goddard about his work on Kaobi and what's coming in the future. Thanks for taking time to speak with me. Can we start by uh, introductions? Uh, tell us who you are and a little bit about the project you're working on. Okay, um, my name's Mark Goddard. I work for Stack HPC. Um, we're a small company based in Bristol in the UK. Um, we work for, uh, mostly with OpenStack um, in, when applied to scientific computing. Um, we're a consultancy, so we have lots of different customers, but we do a lot of, a lot of work with uh, Cambridge University in particular. One of the more interesting projects is um, a project called the SKA, the Square Kilometer Array, which is a project to build a large array of um, radio telescopes in, um, in various places around the world. Um, it's still in fairly early phases um, of that project. And KUV actually started like um, because of that project. So, a bit of background about me. Um, I've been working with OpenStack for about four years now. Um, I started when I was working at a company called Cray, which is um, the, they call themselves the supercomputer company, but they're the original HPC company, um, making huge machines for warehouses. Um, they wanted to take OpenStack and apply it to managing um, their huge supercomputers, clusters, and, and other related systems. Um, that project um, made some progress, but um, didn't get quite to the uh, the full uh, the full supercomputer size. So um, about a year ago, I decided to um, to join Stig, who I believe you just uh, just been speaking yeah. to, um, and uh, and join his his new company. Like I said earlier, we're working in the scientific space with OpenStack. Tell me about Kobe. What's happened in the last, in the la you know, you're not, I guess, since you're not an OpenStack project, you know, mostly I've been talking with projects about the, the six month cycle. Are you, are you kind of on that same cycle? Um, to some extent. So we're, we are able to, to, uh, to keep up with a small amount of lag to, with the, the latest um, releases of, of OpenStack. So we did a, a release of KOV uh, shortly after the Okata release and then another one shortly after Pike. We've been mostly based on Pike um, until recently, so a lot of the Queen's work hasn't really been um, used in Kobe, but we're, we're planning to do a, a Queen's release. Um, I think it's fairly decoupled from OpenStack in many ways. So there are some parts of, um, of Collar that change from release to release, and um, we need to make sure that we're using the latest um, the latest. Uh, Ansible inventory and, and passing the latest configuration into, into Collar. But um, a lot of the things that we focus on are actually fairly decoupled from the latest sort of OpenStack features. So um, supporting a new release of OpenStack is, is pretty um, generally a pretty easy thing to do. So the, the description in the documentation says that it's a scientific OpenStack. What? Is that a collection of certain of the sub-projects, or is it uh, being, uh, you know, opinionated about configuration, or what, what does that look like? So that's um, that's really where it started. Um, it, there was a, you know, a, a specific use case that the, the first deployment of KOB was, was targeted at, which is um, this SKA project that I mentioned, and various scientists and researchers um, Using it, uh, using the system that it was um, deploying as a, a test bed for, for different um, scientific um, computing tools and big data tools, and um, and also doing performance um, analysis of, of some of those some of those tools. So it was really a way of being able to deploy OpenStack in a, a configuration that was um, useful for, and um, and optimal for those those tools. Um, there was a, a focus on ironic. So use of bare metal computing, um, and also some of the first projects that we supported were things like Sahara, giving you the big data um, technologies and, um, and Magnum. But I think as time, time's gone on, um, the scope of KV has grown really, and it's, um, 
it could be seen now as a, a fairly general um, open stack deployment tool. So perhaps the readme is a little out of date. I am um, I was planning to change that for the uh, the Queen's release um, just to try and broaden it. Really, it's um, you know I think you could see it as a fairly equivalent in functionality to to uh, to Triple M. Um, it's certainly in terms of the um, the place that it sits in, in the stack. Yeah. And, and what what distinguishes it from something like Triple M? Do, do you all do the projects uh, collaborate on anything, or are you completely separate? We share the, the common base of collars images now because tri Triple O has started to use those. So um, there's certainly some common in between. Um, the reason we, we first started the project was to address some of the pain points with, um, that have been seen with Triple O. Um, it's, it's got uh, a lot of functionality, it's, it supports a lot of different use cases, a lot of uh, modes of operation. Um, there are a few things that that can be um, a little difficult to work with, um, upgrades in particular, and reconfiguration of the of the stack. Um, they're, they're possible, and um, it certainly does a good job at um, you know, covering lots of different services. While working at Cray, we'd um, we've been looking at Collar, Collar Ansible in particular, as a way of um, deploying OpenStack, and found that it was really quite flexible um, with a, a fairly simple pattern um, that could be stamped out for each of the different services, um, giving you quite a nice, a nice interface to be to, uh, to managing these services, being able to deploy, uh, upgrade and reconfigure the sort of three main operations that it provides. Um, and also not restricting the um, configuration space that you get to see. It, it provides a, um, a kind of opinionated, minimal set of configuration um, that should give you a you know, working deployment out of the box, albeit a small amount of you know, additional um, set of required. But on top of that, you can provide um, OpenStack um, any configuration files, um, meaning that for, you know, for any any config file that you want, and you can target those to particular services, particular um, particular hosts, and it really means that any configuration option provided by OpenStack is available for setting. You don't need explicit support in Collar to do that, and that's that's really powerful. We found that Collar Ansible was a great tool, and. Um, the reason we need Kaobi is that um, Collar Ansible has this quite a, um, a particular focus that is more narrow in scope than Triple O's. So Triple O really does manage the entire deployment from um, you know, sort of single node, um, your your under cloud node, all the way to rolling out a, a control plane on a, across a, a set of nodes, and then and then potentially also deploying bare metal computer or virtualized computer as well. Um, what, where, co where Color Ansible stops is that it, it only focuses on the containerized um, control plane deployment, so rolling out the, um, the containerized OpenStack services. It's, that's certainly its main area of focus. It's got some, uh, some focus for, um, some support for deploying the um, the servers on which those um, those services run, but it's it's quite immature and, and lacking in a, a number of places. So, so what KOV does is it it um, it adds it fills in the gaps to um, to provide this the full sort of um, you know, same depth of the stack as Triple O in that it gives you support for setting up uh, an under an under cloud like node. Um, rather than running a full OpenStack cloud, we run Bifrost, which is um, a more uh, minimal, um, standalone, ironic um, setup, um, plus a set of Ansible playbooks on top. That's quite nice in that it's fairly simple, um, and it also means that we get a, um, a controlled mapping of, um, 
of the instances running on those nodes to, um, rather than relying on Nova as a scheduler for our control plane, we, we get a fairly static mapping, which we, we have control over. There are the things that it does to really just join in the gaps between um, triggering a, uh, an inspection of, of the cloud hardware, um, discovering the, the nodes, having them sort of enroll themselves in, in this under cloud, or seed as we call it, um, ironic service, but then working out what to do with those nodes um, and how to um, generate an Ansible inventory for Color Ansible that, um, that places services in a, a sensible way across those, across those nodes. And, and also trying to take into account the, um, the configuration um, that's been applied to influence the placement of services across those nodes. So we might have some nodes that are controllers, some nodes that provide storage, other nodes that provide um, virtualized compute, patting hypervisors. So it's, it's role mapping essentially, but with a bit more um, the ability to, to control service placement in a fine grained way. What is your focus in the coming cycle? We would like to become an OpenStack related project. Um, at the moment, we're using a, um, a GitHub repository under our company organization on GitHub, um, which is fine. It's, it's all open source. Um, we have people from other companies collaborating on, um, with us on that repository. But um, one thing that would be very useful is um, having Zool and the other OpenStack um, CI infrastructure at our disposal for, for testing changes. And I think as, you know, as the, the project's popularity increases, um, the, the simple GitHub pull request model, although a little faster and um, you know, easier to get large changes through than Garrett, um, it's not so good for collaboration um, and you know, uh, detailed review. So, I think as the as the comp as the project grows in, in size and popularity and maturity, um, you know, perhaps slows down in development um, a little bit. Then um, Garrett seems um, quite attractive as a way of um, working, and um, and Zool in particular, and the, the the CI infrastructure, I think will um, help us to improve the the reliability and the um, particularly when. People, um, the contributor base grows um, beyond those who started the project and um, being able to reliably make changes without um, breaking things is pretty important. So we use Travis CI at the moment, which is nice, but is fairly limited in what in what you can do for testing. So you know, it would be a nice, um, a nice improvement. What's involved in, in getting that label? Is there some bar you have to, to pass to, to get that? There is a, a guide um, from the infra team, which, you, um, which is fairly long, <laughs> and you, you, you are instructed to work through it step by step and only in the, in the correct order. Um, it, it essentially amounts to ensuring you've got either launch pad or storyboard set up, um, writing the appropriate entries into um, the, the project config YAML, um, and then making sure you've got uh, Zool jobs set up, um, Garrett groups for um, for the core team and other people. I don't believe there's any requirement beyond just sort of going through that process, making sure you you know you. I think you have to be all in to some extent. You can't pick and choose the the parts of the system you want to use. So you you know if you're going to get use the um, the CI infrastructure, you've got to be using Launchpad or Storyboard. Other than checking those boxes, I don't think yeah, no, I saw that. there's anything All right, Andy, Although, thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it. Perhaps if you proposed something that was entirely unrelated to OpenStack, you might get questions asked. What have I not asked you that you would like to get on, on this interview? I guess a, uh, you know, a plea for anyone interested to, um, to just try us out. Um, the color community is large and um, you know, fairly varied in terms of the, the people that are using it. Um, I know some some people from the Collar team have, 
have tried out Kobe. Um, we'll be discussing it in the collar meeting, uh, sorry, the, the collar sessions later this week. There's always a bit of a chicken and egg, isn't there? With starting a new project, you, you need to be mature enough to look legitimate, and um, you need a certain amount of um, momentum before people start to, to trust it. But I think you know, we've had a few early um, early users who um, who haven't run away screaming and um, you know, are, are good and um, good community um, users as well who are contributing back to the project, which is which is nice. Um, it would be nice to see that support that um, that, that base grow, and you know, ideally, one day perhaps become the um, end-to-end -end deployment tool of choice alongside Collar. Now, your project's a little harder to find since it's not connected with the other OpenStack projects yet. Where should we go to find it? Um, where do you hang out on IRC? What mailing list should we be on? Documentation is at kob.readthedocs.org. Um, is it .org? Or probably not .org, .org, no, probably... It, oh, yeah, just correct. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Readthedocs.io, yeah. yeah. Um, we have an IRC, IRC channel, which is um, hash uh, openstack hyphen kob. Um, please join. Um, yeah. A small but friendly, uh, friendly uh, community. Um, there are you know, a few guys in the uh, the collar channel that are also that I can help you help out. Thank you so much for your time and, and good luck in, in the rest of the week with your discussions. Great, thank you.